Hey guys, this is Mr. Jack and Triple Zero here, back with BMG Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a vehicle mod called the Gavril My Own right here. It's a 1980s American Compact Coupe and Hatchback that's based mostly off the Ibishu Colvet. So right here we got quite a amount of different trims to choose from of the My Own. The first we're going to be starting is the STS lineup for the van, hatchback, and coupe. It's got the 2.2 liter. It's the basic model with steel wheels and hubcaps. It's both for the manual and automatic transmissions of these vehicles, including the serviced assist model. It's the same 2.2 liter engine, but it's for the Gavril Mobile Service Department, it seems like. Then we jump up to the RTS model, which is the intermediate model of alloy rims for the hatchback and coupe models here, both automatic and manual. Then the third level, the GTS, is the 2.2 liter sport model of the conventional front end. They're both offered in manuals for the hatchback and coupe models. Then we get up to the GTS Coupe GT model. Same engine, but it's got the aerodynamic front end and retractable lights offered in manual for the sedan, or excuse me, the coupe and the hatchback. And then we jump up to the 3.3 liter engine, the same trim model. It's got the 3.3 liter sport model with aerodynamic front end and retractable lights. Intake was upgraded with a supercharger. Interesting. And then we get up to some interesting models here, such as the Street Tune version, the 2.2 liter, the Rally Car, and the Indy 500 Safety Wagon and Safety Car. It's the Indianapolis 500 Safety Car based on the GTS trim model converted to front wheel drive. So first things first, let's start off with the basics with the STS Coupe in manual. And if you look at this thing, based on the uh, turn signals, everything, the taillights... It's very reminiscent to the COVID that I've mentioned. I'm going to spawn one right next to it for comparison. So I got both the COVID and my own right here. And looking at the taillights, they are pretty much the same. Except for some color changes for the indicators of the my own. It's got the amber color for the indicators while the COVID is just plain old red right here. And looking at the front... If you look at the grill section, the front bumper and everything, well, first of all, headlights are pretty much the same, but the Myon has got a little bit of a different color accent on the turn indicators, or the side of the vehicle, and the bumper here. And the grill of the Myon, it's a little bit bigger than the Covet, but it's just pretty much the same, including the hood here, like the shape of the hood. While it is longer and everything, it's still got that, uh... Those indents right here of the middle of the hood and the sides right here, including the same for the Covet. And if you look into the interior, I'll use the relative camera and turn on the lights on both of them. So turn on the lights here of the my own and just looking at the interior, if you know about the Covet, it's the same dashboard, same vents, similar uh, gauges here. The gauge is under my own. It's got this little, uh, looks like a stud or something right in the middle, like a chrome stud. While the Covet doesn't have that, it's just like a plastic piece or something. So I'm gonna switch over to the Covet and just take a look at the similarities of the Covet and the my own. It's pretty much the same in terms of the dashboard, including the climate control system here. It's more chromey, but relatively similar. And the gear shifter here, um, is this a manual on top of a automatic? Yes, that is. That's a five-speed on an automatic transmission shifter. <laughs> nice. And also about the my own turn signal indicators work, as you see here. Gas pedal, including the clutch and brake pedal. All that is functional with this vehicle. So the COVID is out of the way. Let's start the driving right now with the my own and do an impromptu 0-60 to 60 test while we're at it. Going downhill, so it's gonna be flawed, including up here with this downhill. Oh, we didn't get that downhill, so 0-62 to 62 in 10.03 seconds of 529.79 feet. What's this gonna all the way until we crash at the bottom here in this turn? And we bought two wheeling, so crash up here at the little driveway and get a camera going with this crash test. So an 88 mile an hour crash. I think this this will do right here. High DUI in 16 times slow-mo. Resume physics now. Damn, son. Well, good thing I brought the FOV back. So go to four times, and it's just going to be stuck there. 
and the engine is still running with this vehicle. <laughs> I think an average Beam G vehicle, probably a COVID or something. Same thing down here, crash right here. It'll probably be dead. Can I back this up or no? Nah? I think I can because it's front wheel drive. So grab here. Okay, we broke off the taillights. That's nice. Can we break off the trunk? No, but fuel tank ruptured. Uh, yeah, screw this. Well, we killed the engine, so that's fair enough. And real quick, let me take this to the highway so I can do the 62 to zero brake test and a top speed run. I'm gonna do this to, to a few other vehicles and we'll throw this onto a track for a time trial run. So getting ready for a 62 to zero brake test. Let's do a zero to 60 real quick, see if it's changed anything going downhill. So it did. 11.1 seconds, about a 90 feet difference. So 62 to zero, uh, now. No ABS whatsoever, skidding the tires. 62 to 0 in 3.48 seconds of 147.25 feet. Roughly similar to the Covet when I made that Ibishu Chasai video about uh, three or four months ago, which you don't know what that car is. It's a Japanese K car that is mostly based off the Covet in terms of styling and everything. It was a nimble but interesting vehicle, and I pretty much did what I did here. Zero to 62s, top speed runs, crash tests, and throwing onto a track. So now let's switch this up to a uh, slightly beefier version. Let's do the GTS version. No, let's do an RTS and then GTS, and then we throw it on the track with the GTS, the 3.3 liter version. So let's throw up a hatchback model of the RTS, and just taking a look at the hatchback version. I mean, not that bad looking, you got a buttload of chrome trim right here, like it's a car from the 1950s or something. Like your big ass boat cell cars or something. <laughs> Is this like an early 80s car or something? Does it tell you on the thing here? Uh, 1987 to 1995, Derby Class Compact Cabriolet. Okay, then. Fair enough. And it weighs just over a ton. I mean, for this amount of chrome, it should weigh probably more. <laughs> so let's do a top speed run. We're not going to do any brake tests. Let's just do an impromptu 0 to 62 top speed run and crash this out somewhere. So 0 to 62, a little bit worse. 11.36 seconds of 645.76 feet. And what is the top speed according to the uh, speedometer? It's showing 120. We got a somewhat weak, I'm guessing, four-cylinder engine, a 2.2 liter. I mean, it was pretty much around that time when, uh, of course, you had the oil crisis back then in the um, early 70s thing, late 60s, early 70s. Back then, when fuel economy was at its worst back then and the oil embargo was going on because of the Yom Kippur War going on over in Israel and stuff like that. And coming up to the end of the map here, we're not going to get top speed. So a top speed would be 110-ish, right? So top speed of 120, a total fail. So let's get a uh, camera going before we crash out. And let's do it in a 100 times slow-mo. So unfreeze and reset FOV. Crumble away. There goes everything with the car. Eight times. There goes the bumper and car crash in 3D be like. And full time. All right, we've killed the engine there, according to the damage meter. And looking right here, we got some loose polygons of the chassis or something. I think that's probably what it is. It's probably the chassis or something, and it's just glitching out all over the place. And taking a look at this vehicle, of the aftermath of the collision, everybody would be dead, as I would have predicted. So what's it like with the interior? Uh, interior... Uh, the driver is a backseat driver, according to the camera here. <laughs> At least he's got a complimentary steering wheel right here. Uh, I give credit to that. How about the GTS model? Let's do the coupe version of the my own. And same thing, crash test, top speed run, all that good stuff. And probably next, maybe an overlap and crash with two of the same cars on this highway. And holy acceleration. 5.11 seconds compared to an 11 second time. And we got a little, um, hold up, let's zoom in. Hey, okay, we're past our top speed. We got a little gear shift light right at the bottom of the, um, the dashboard here. That That's pretty cool. And we got 10 pounds of boost of the, uh, the superchargers. I can barely hear it. 160 according to the wheel spin, but 
We had top speed, 163. 165 is our top speed. Let's crash the toll booth. Slap dab on the toll booth. 162. Let's let's do an interior crash. 16 times slow mo. Hide the UI. Camera as is. Go. Oh my god, let's switch. It, it's on fire. Full time. I thought it was going to be standing upright at first, but... <laughs> well, we got a fire going on here for the first time in quite a while. Brakes are fading, drive shaft broken, right rear brake fading, front left brake fading. Uh, we get it because we're on fire, according to this nature of destruction here. And I think we can extinguish the fire, right? Uh, fun stuff. Uh, extinguish. Oh, no. Really? No. Rev it up. Are you kidding me? The engine still runs after a 160 mile an hour crash. Let me flip this upright and get a better look at destruction. So take a look at this car. The engine is right here. How is that able to run when the engine is just like right next to the passenger? Like <laughs> that is just so unrealistic, but so awkward at the same time. It's giving me some like those automation vehicle vibes where you take a collision or a hit like this and it still runs. No matter where the engine and drivetrain is at, it'll run no matter what. And you got the front left tire here, just pointed way up like a freaking dog just giving your paw or something. And even the back end is just squished upward. The front squished up, back squished up, the middle, and eh, it's pretty much the old middleman stuff. It doesn't want to get into the middle. Block melted. There you have it, folks. Let's take a look at the interior. Yep, I am officially a turn indicator. With the over-rev limiter gone mentally insane right here. Jeez, man. So we got two of the Mayones coming head-on right here. Are we doing an overlapping crash at 70 miles an hour right here? Are we aligned? Uh, it's gonna be close. Uh, barely aligned. I might do it again if this comes out to be a bad one. So, hide the UI around 70-ish miles an hour. Uh, that's a mediocre one, but quite interesting. So there's the coupe, full time. Don't over, don't break the engine. This guy, um, he'll just end up in the wall. So let me try it again, real quick. This here will do. Not the perfect overlap, but this is much better. Eight times now. There we go. There we go. That's an overlapping crash, ladies and gentlemen. Full time. And let's shut these guys up so I can talk here. Let's take a look at the coupe model here. As expected, shifted over pretty good with the intercooler exposed right here. What's the engine like? It's a four-cylinder engine. I did take a look at that in private when I was setting this up. And the front bumper is i think fapping at the moment could you please stop right now dude and we got the doors they're about to be um leaving the chat here in a second that's been detached kind of including right here but it's not fully detached at the driver's side door and the interior just brief look you're getting a double amputation my friend maybe quadruple or triple if you include the arms and the coupe model bring this up right without breaking anything in the process. I think something flew out, but who cares? Door is exposed. Same thing, the intercooler pointed upward with the engine. Can I get a good look at the engine? Uh, it's been shifted up quite a bit. And the, um, where the transmission goes right here, that's been snapped off, but it's still drivable, right? According to BMG, just radiator leaking and that tire missing. <laughs> wow. Looking at the other side, not like the coupe model, we still got the door attached, but the windows are blown out. And brief look at the interior. Uh, you got yourself a triple quadruple amputee, it's even worse than the coupe, with the dashboard, steering wheel, and everything right at the driver's compartment, and pretty much at the driver's body. So now at the time trials, we're going to be staying at this map here. We're going to be doing the long race circuit with the GTS Coupe GT model, the one at the aerodynamic front end and retractable lights of the my own. And we're going to be doing two laps of this race course. We'll be doing one with the 2.2 liter and the 3.3 liter version of the my own. And then probably end us off somewhere with all three of the other my owns here. So right now... We're going to take you to the starting line with the 2.2 liter of the Bayonne right now.
And what's even more interesting, when you download the mod, you get a custom loading screen here. Oh, that's pretty cool. You got the one with the Indianapolis 500 pace car, which is pretty interesting. It's got a siren on here. It doesn't have a, uh, like a dedicated light bar. It uses straight from the police car asset. And damn son. So here we are at the starting line. A bit off-centered of the little grid space here, but who cares about that? So let's get ready to start this race up here in three, two, one, start. Not too bad of a launch, but who cares? And is this a all-wheel drive? Yes, that's an all-wheel drive model to my own. So break. Forgot this is a non-ABS car, so we're going to be off track. Well, we got two, we got another lap to make this up. I swear we got top speed right here at this slug stretch of the straightaway here. Are we? So 120 miles an hour. I think top speed is 165, as we observed earlier when we did the top speed runs at the highway. And I think we should break now. 147. Brakes are fading. Brakes are fading. And we're not going to crash at the tire barriers. So in the sand pit we go. And back on the road. And what I'm about to be doing with the next time trial. Once I get done with this. this and what's going to be doing in the... And what are we doing next in the next time trial with the 3.3 liter bottle of the my own is that I might uh, do this course in reverse like right now I'm doing this wow as is like I'm gonna flip it in reverse and do the two laps like I'm doing now but with the 3.3 liter version of the my own once I get done with this. Alright come on to the last corners hit the brakes and we're still fading and we kind of drifting and not only that do we pop the door hinges off a little? I mean, the doors are not that flush right here, and our first lap time is 2 minutes, 27 seconds, 514 milliseconds. Not bad, and brake a lot early. There you have it. Brakes have faded, and we just recovered. Fair enough. Say about this car, this car kind of understeers quite a bit at like some high speeds, it seems like. Might have taken a little bit easier from now on. And that understeer, though. I'm like, I'm treating this car like it's a damn Formula 1 up in here or something. And also, brake cooled out, as you see at the bottom left with the brake temperatures. It's taken quite a while to cool down the front brakes. It's still semi-faded. Kind of like an orangey, reddish hue color. So get ready to brake. Let's do it right now. Slowly. Brakes are fading. All four are fading. And... Not bad. Unlike before, how we ended up in the sand pit, almost going into the um, the tire barriers up there that turn, but we ended up quite well. Three of the four brakes are fading, and the back brakes are unfaded all of, all of a sudden. Coming down to the Wadabe Laguna Seca corner without screwing up like I always do. It's like probably 60% of the time, but I always screw up at that corkscrew right there. I don't know why. It's like I always take it way too fast somehow. Coming on our last corner, last straightaway, all four brakes are faded. The lap time we get is a much better one, a 2 minutes, 17 seconds, 621 milliseconds, with a total time of 4 minutes, 45 seconds, 134 milliseconds. That puts us dead last of all of the vehicles tested. From first one, the DJ Quick Pseudo Creepa, my fastest automation build vehicle. Then the Vista Hardboy Echo, a wannabe budget Dodge Hellcat. The Midget T-Type, the track day model of the Daihatsu Midget, and another one of the same Midget, the T-Type model. And slow-mo as is, we're going 120 something miles an hour, and we're just gonna crash these tire barriers just up ahead. And not only that, that's gonna put us into a pinch, so camera as is, hit. Oh my god, that... I would just say, I thought they would collapse the body even further. <laughs> So go to, um, get out of here, free roam. And we broke the drive shaft, but the engine still runs. Can we... do that engine is starved of oil. Huh? We're not upside down. Is it because the engine is shifted upwards? Which I think that's what the problem is. Engine locked up. So next time trial, like I said, go to my own with the hatchback 3.3 liter GTS model of the my own and do this in reverse. And same two laps, so take it to the other side of the starting line right now. And is it me or this sounds a little bit quieter? 
So here we are at the other side of starting line. We're not at the little grid space here because we're doing this in reverse. And not only that, we get an interesting stripe right here. A two-tone uh, livery, a stripe right here at the word my own right here. Uh, not too bad looking, and I forgot about the headlights. Pull it up right now. There's the headlights. High beams, close, open, close, open, close. You, you get, you know the drill. All right, restart everything. Dropped out at a high place. Get ready to start here in three, two, one, start. Holy V8 engine. That sounds hella brutal. It sounds like a freaking V8 engine, and same thing, no ABS. Who needs that anyways? And I might as well use, um, Arcade, a realistic gearbox, because Arcade, it keeps shifting down, up, down, up, down, up. Let's just do this. And now we're going uphill. The Wannabe will go to Seika Corner. First time of this channel. And we handle that pretty smoothly. And it's pretty interesting doing a course in reverse as we're as I'm used to this going in regular mode. And we've already faded out the brakes, especially the front left brake light here. Front right, not so bad. Backs are doing okay. And I think the front brakes, I think these are um, vented discs and the rear brakes are solid discs. And we're going to hit top speed right here. Is this five gear or six gear? Five gear it is. Brake, brake, brake. Ah! Oh my god. I wasn't expecting to get into that type of crash. There you have it, folks. <laughs> I thought I was about to avoid that, but nope. Nope, I didn't. So, quick look at the destruction, and it'll take you to the point where I've crashed out at. And hopefully I don't crash out again. Alright, break now. I'm kind of scared. Break now, break now, break now. We're fading, but I'll take that matters. No, that didn't matter whatsoever. Alright, good. I was kind of scared that we we're going to spin out. And not do it in reverse. I would say I swore by going fast at that uh, straightaway back there. I thought I was going to do the same exact crash again. Like, fade out the brakes, try to lose some speed somehow. Ended up crashing at the little side of the little barrier of like where you enter for your drag races. But luckily, I didn't get to do that again. And it's not even the end of the first lap. And we already faded out the front brakes right here. Doing some all-wheel drifts fair recover but not the best coming on our final turn here coming up to the first lap of our completion did we get a time of two minutes take 15 seconds no 16 seconds 76 milliseconds at break oh god brakes are fading dead god damn it i'm about done with this and for this lap i think we could get a better time than my last attempt so two minutes uh 12 seconds 14 milliseconds break right now Good. Even a little bit less. Half better. Not great, but better than I've expected. And if there's nothing interesting in the second lap, I'll just take it to the end of the, um, the second lap here. I think this is bad. 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 Yup, this was bad since day number one. And hey, can we continue? Well, we can continue with uh, a radiator leaking, so let's just continue this out right now. Everything as is, and we can barely steer left. And looking at the split time, it's impossible to steer left. And the frickin' tire rod right here is just snapped right off. We're gonna be infinitely steering to the right, according to the front left wheel, and to the left, and to the right. So let's just end it right here. Yeah, it's useless. The time we get is 2 minutes, 12 seconds, 14 milliseconds. Let's just say that's our total time. And before we take this down somewhere to like leap a death, which is and it's uh did you just see the wheel spin? Hold up. Neutral, parking brake, reverse, go. What the hell? Uh <laughs> I don't think tires could go 200 miles an hour in reverse when you touch the gas pedal. How about here? just fine in the grass that is weird yeah let's just say that we just ended a misery right there so now go to leap of death with the other cars i think the street tune model and probably maybe the other two can fit them in like the indy 500 one the rally so take it to leap of death right now so first off let's drive out the rally version of the um the my own here and we got a uh, interesting quite a bit amount of sponsors on here with these little uh, headlights here that 
Unfortunately, don't work. These rally headlights, just these pop-up headlights. And why does my analog stick at the gas for some reason? And there goes the headlights, and there goes me hitting the gas, so... Drive down this hill here, and up at the ramp, and exit speed. Roughly 60-something miles an hour. And coming down at a pretty high speed. Get ready for some slow-mo right about now. Two times, four, eight, sixteen. At 190 miles an hour, camera as is. Damn, son. Go to eight times. Hell, this hit. We're on fire, as you can see. Okay, now we're definitely on fire, full time. And are we still going? Yes, the engine's still alive. There's proof, and everything as is. Damn, that was a pretty brutal hit. And... Kinda right there, too. Can we tumble down the rest of the cliff face here into the water? It appears so, it seems like. So, ramp down there, and I think we got one more to go before we splash. Add... Damn, axle broken, add, splash. And there goes every fire in existence because we extinguished it in this little pond. So, take you to some flat land to see the aftermath of the destruction. And here we are with some red polygons all over the place here. You got this doing something, some laser beam stuff, including this guy doing some ribbon laser beam or whatever. And this thing... I don't know if you can hear that. That is trying to fap at the North Star. Th th that is nasty, dude. You don't do that to planet Earth, man. Astrology and everything in general. So look at the, um, the destruction here of this vehicle. Crinkled up like hell. Front, about compacted it down, like squished it down, almost like bottlenecking it. Left side, kind of like the right side. Back end, meh. So the last part of the video, like I usually do, is that I drive straight as fast as I can, and then once I get to a fair amount of top speed, I freeze the physics, then go to free cam, and then spawn myself, like, right around here, like some of these peaks here, of this, uh, this mountain here, and then try to get a crash going at the side of these cliff faces and land back at this crater right here. So we got ourselves the Indy 500 pace car with these um, police lights on here with a German siren. Way to hype the crowd up, man. <laughs> it doesn't even have like amber lighting or whatever, just these red and blue police lights with this siren right here. That's interesting, man. <laughs> so like I said... Drive down here, quickly as I can, without doing anything wild or none, so... We'll get a top speed of around... 72, it wasn't even upshifting for some odd reason, is this top speed limited or what? So 72 it is, so spawn myself where I'm circling at right here, hit F7 to spawn the vehicle in, with the same speed, position, and everything, and just drop this down to these sides of the cliff, and land back at the crater. So here we are, roughly 6 feet in the air with the pace car, still at 71 miles an hour, and just to spice things up temporarily, do an interior view of me just crashing down and scraping, hitting, bashing at whatever we do at the sides of the cliff face, and then just do an exterior view like I usually do with these crash tests. So, go to interior view, unfreeze, and just do that. And this is pretty daunting, so... Hold on, slow this down a little. I want to make sure where the hell we're going before we make impact. So, right here. Oh my god. 100 times slow-mo. This is going to be very interesting. 215 miles an hour upon impact, and we should change cameras. Damn, son. Hood's gone. Engine is exposed right here. So, full time. Damn, son. Engine is still running. Engine is still running, as you see right here, and I thought that would have ended it, but no, it didn't. How about right around here? Right now? Nope. Now this is brutal. Engine broken. Thank you, that, that didn't even deserve to be running, and right rear, right left, tire deflated. There you have it, folks. And some polygons still going mental. Pretty brutal hit. And kind of brutal right there, and I think we're going to do this in one shot, or no? I don't hit no, I hit the frickin' side of the cliff, and I think we may not get this in one shot, but I have to yank this out again, like, um... Yep, I gotta yank this out. It's like always right around here, I have to yank it out, and then we reach the bottom, like right here, so... Grab the car, 
Yankee is up to 70, and there we go. Reached the bottom of the cliff by cheating. And we got that in the process. So once it comes to a stop, we'll take a look at the aftermath of destruction, which is right about, let's just say right about now. It's just going to keep sliding and sliding, but we pretty much got a hand of the destruction right here. So this polygon's gone mental, protruding right out of the ground here. This one protruding out of the side of the cliff here and the ground in the front end is just mangled up pretty good and the engine oh where's the engine at man that thing is right here or is that the radiator uh <laughs> that's gone man the engine's gone the driver's gone the back end lifted up three feet an exaggeration into the air right side yeah everything about it dead and the seat is protruding out from the roof same thing with the steering wheel is this thing it still animates despite being right here. And to wrap up the crash test of every single one of my owns, we're gonna do an unorthodox style of a crash test. It's just me throwing it up in negative Earth gravity, that Jupiter had backed down to Earth gravity, which we're already at 222 miles an hour, which is back it up a little. And we'll just do uh, eight times slow mo right about now. And dead. <laughs> there you go, full time. And the engine is still running, and the engine and everything is on fire. That is pretty interesting. So go back to regular cam, and the thing is orange. Engine is starved of oil. The thing is just... It's just, uh, dramatizing itself. Watch. Hit the gas. And wait for it. See? Nothing wrong whatsoever. I guess I was lying the whole time. So looking at the damage, this thing is officially the North Pole, this guy the West Pole, and everything about this car destroyed in a fiery mess just like the Indy 500 pace car. <laughs> Pretty nothing uh, unusual, just this. This is what we get because of what I did. So that'll do it with BMG Drive with the Gavro my own. I mean, it's quite of an interesting yet unique vehicle despite the similarities based off the Ibishu Covet and I think the, um, the one with the aerodynamic front end is giving me some, like, uh, what, the BX200 vibes in terms of, like, the light placement and this little grill right here, if I'm right or wrong. But overall, this vehicle, in terms of performance with the GTS and the higher-end models of the my own, I mean, it's it's not that bad. It's pretty great, to be honest, despite not having ABS brakes, which that was an option back in the days, in the 1980s, when back then it was a luxury, not a requirement like today. I do give props to this vehicle, despite having some understeering here and there with the performance models, which I don't know if that is supposed to be understeering on purpose or it's just what it is. I mean, I know it's not like a high-end racing line where you get like 1.2 Gs of steering. Well, I got like roughly 0 0.8, 0 0.9 or something like that, which I don't know what I got there. I wasn't paying attention to G-Force Speed or when I was doing those time trials, but overall... A great mod by the mod author, and also, the link to download this mod is in the description below if you want to try this vehicle out yourself, and it's also in the Beam&G repository. So this has been Mr. Jack and Triple Zero, I'll see you in the next video.